Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today's gonna be all about how I built my soldier fly box, the design of the box, and all the features of it. There's a lot of great designs online other people have built, and this is kind of a combination of some other designs, some of my own ideas. So this box is built into two pieces, the stand and then the box itself where all the compost and the larvae are. This is where the drainage is and this is the main feature of my box that is different from some of the other designs online so the entire bottom of this box here is has a layer of weed mat so that it's able to drain very easily and, pre and prevent any anaerobic conditions this is version one of this box i'm gonna make a version two probably for next season after i have ran this thing for two years now i've learned a lot of lessons from it and now i'm gonna make it better so just to quickly show you guys, so this is an extra incubation bin for them, uh, just filled with compost. The actual flies themselves will go down in here and lay their eggs, and you can see a lot of the leftover shells after the larvas have pupated. So that's what that is. This top bin here, this is of course where the soldier fly are and where they eat. It's now they almost winter, so they're really slowed down they're not really eating too much anymore and the bin's going to be shut down for winter this is the latest model of my ramp that needs to get even better for next year it might be hard to see but down there is where the weed mat is and it all drains through so basically the whole bottom of this thing is able to release water and that was the kind of the main design feature and if i was going to change something so for next year i'm going to use a stainless steel mesh bottom and I'm hoping that that will just, you know, it's gonna, of course, gonna last a lot longer. And I'm hoping that it will drain even better because the weed mat, although it still drains decently, now that, you know, a year's worth of material and frass has built up, it is harder for the water to drain through because it's, you know, some of the material has clogged those holes. Or the other option would be to clean this thing occasionally, like shoot some water and, and then try to drain it through or try to shoot water at the bottom to unclog some of it. So these are some of the little kinks that I'm working through. So I hope you guys enjoy seeing how I built this and how I thought about designing it. And I'll give you guys some different tips and, and things about the box and facts about the larvae as we go through the video. Um, today, I'm gonna be building the box that'll be built on top of it. Everything that I'm using on this project is just old lumber or things that I've recycled or collected. Here's the plywood I'll be using for the actual box that will contain the compost and the soldier fly larva. And that box is just going to be placed directly on top of this table. All right, so my next step is to sure up these corners. I did a pretty good job of fitting this in very snugly. I had to beat it in with a, a rubber mallet. As you can see, it's pretty tight, but we need to make this super tight. I don't want any larva to be able to escape. So what I've done is I've cut out a 19 inch piece. It'll allow me to you know, cinch up all this wood, get it super tight. As you can see, it's gonna be raised up a bit and my lid will sit on top, giving an inch gap for uh, the soldier fly to enter. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish cutting out the rest of the leg pieces here. And then the piece I'll need to create is the, the lid. So as you can see, there's just a little bit of a gap here. So I'm just going to bend the wood. I'll be drilling pilot holes to prevent any splitting of the wood. I'm going to mount it to this board first so that I can mount it forward and then drill it in from this side. Right, so the next step uh, is to add the hardware cloth to the bottom. So I'm a little, a little worried about the strength here in the middle over time once this metal starts to corrode a little bit. So I've got some of this extra hardware cloth anyways. So I think I might just do a double layer here like this. So for drainage, I'm going to be using a weed mat. 
I got the cheapest kind, which actually has the largest uh, holes in them. And it says to put the glossy side facing up for the best drainage. So you know, usually this is used in landscaping. Finally just had a breakthrough. I've been pondering on how to create this for a long time, a couple weeks, and I finally figured out a good solution. This box is upside down. This is the bottom. I need to keep the soil from falling out. I also need to keep any uh, baby larva from trying to escape or crawl out. Um, so how do I do that so that it's super tight, but the moisture can drain easily, and it's supported? I also wanted it to be easily removable and replaceable if need be. You know, I thought about putting a layer of this weed mat, then a layer of this. I thought about putting the, the weed mat and the uh, hardware cloth just on the table itself. Um, but all those different ideas had different pros and cons, none of which gave me easily removable, easily replaceable, and a super tight seal. Uh, so I just had a breakthrough, and my idea now, I'm going to build out a frame that will go along the entire bottom, and this frame is going to act as a tightener on the weed mat. So basically, I'll just cut out a perfectly sized piece of weed mat, I'll lay my pre-built frame out, and then I will screw it down. Screwing it down is going to create an, an incredibly tight seal. Also a part of this frame will be the hardware cloth. The hardware cloth will sit on top here and provide support for the weed mat so that when the soil is laying on top um, it doesn't rip or tear. So when I need to, let's say I need to replace the weed mat, my drainage uh, source, um, I would just unscrew my frame and this entire piece will just come off as one thing like this and the weed mat will just be loose. And I just take the weed mop, weed mop out, uh, put my new cut piece in here, lay the frame back on top, screw it in again, and boom, it would be really quick to replace it if need be. And then maybe this one's still functional. You can rinse it off, dry it out, get it clean, put it back in, put the frame back on, screw it back in. We have my weed mat and right underneath is the hardware cloth and that's going to be able to take a lot of pressure. Oh wow, it's like a ton of water, it just drains no problem. That's a good sign that this is going to have really nice drainage. So now I'm going to be attaching the supports. Uh, which are going to attach uh, to the hinges and then the box and the lid. Now the supports, I'm using a piece of 2x3 and 2 inch number 2 uh, screws. So what I'm going to do now is line up these support boards uh, so that the hinge will rest right in the center here. So you can see how I did it. So we have a nice lid. So the first thing that I need to do is actually build the collection bucket where the soldier fly are going to dump into with the ramp. And the reason I need to set this up first is that, that the height that I make this is going to help me determine where I drill the hole in the box and all of that. So this is the key piece. So we're going to set this up first. Now this is a 3 quarter inch, 45 degree angle PVC fitting. So this is just going to be like a nice big funnel that fits on this perfectly. Here's my homemade funnel. Okay, so now you're looking from inside the coop and I need to cut out a section of this metal, shove the pipe through, and then we'll cut it to length once the system's fully built. So there's our pipe at a really sharp angle. It's gonna drop them out real fast. And I'm gonna leave it really long because I'm still playing around with my ideas about how I'm gonna collect them, or maybe just have them drop directly onto the ground here, and then when the chickens wake up in the morning, they'll have a huge feast on the ground. Maybe they'll crawl out. I'm not really sure what's gonna happen. Maybe I wanna collect them 
and um, disperse the food how I want to. Maybe I want to freeze some for later. You can actually freeze these for long-term storage for the birds. Also, I could save the larvae to throw back into my inoculation box so that they can pupate, become flies, and then hopefully lay eggs again back into this box. And then we'll have a circulating natural population living here. Um, that as long as I keep feeding the box, they'll continue to produce the larva, they'll continue to come out here, and then I'll occasionally collect them to throw them back in this box as an emergency backup. All right, so check it out. It turned out perfectly, actually. And it fits in there really snug. And then just to reinforce it, I'm gonna put one of these on. This is just a three quarter inch um, bracket that you can buy for any PVC fittings. It's gonna strap on there. And I'm just doing this just in case so it's not, I know it's, I know it's not gonna move around at all. There's no way, way it can go anywhere. So now we just need to set up the ramps. All right guys, so now I'm gonna show you how I'm determining the length that I'm gonna cut my ramps and basing that on the angle that the ramp is going to be. At this angle, obviously I could go straight, I'll be slightly lower to be on top of this, but it's about at 30 degrees. So now I can actually see how short I can make this. I don't wanna go beyond 45 degrees. Okay, so the ramps ended up being, it says 29.3, and then this one, 38.5. So this is a nice test, right? We got something a little under 30, something a little over 45, and I'm gonna support it um, once again with some of these three quarter inch, or maybe I'll just put a screw in and then I'll just hold it there. Another option I've seen people do for ramps, they'll cut maybe like one or one and a half inch PVC in half, and then it's just like a semicircle, just nice ramp. Or you could use, there's a lot of different things you could use but I'm real hopeful that this is going to work. We'll just drop right into there and into the hole. And then out, straight to feed the chickens, or I can collect it in a bucket. In case you're wondering, this thing's called a digital angle finder, and I use this to set my solar panel angle. Um, and then as you just saw, to find angles of other things, it's pretty cool because there's a magnetic strip on the bottom, so that's how I was able to just stick it to the metal. You know, I think it's around 20 bucks or something. I'll put a link to the description in the bottom of the video. Okay, so my original ramp system was not very good because there was only one access point from the side. So now I've switched it so that as long as they come this direction, they're gonna hit this ramp and then be pushed into this corner. Now there's some different variations that may happen. They may crawl up the sides here and be able to get out. You know, I may need to put another blocker that leads them there, but I think it should be okay. And they should drop right in. I've moved everything that was under here to the other side and there's not really any way for them to get underneath now because I jammed this board up against. I checked the angle, the angle of this board is uh, 38 degrees, which should be good because 45 is kind of the max for them. 